All right, so maybe you're building a special space uh, that's going to be a living room theater, a uh, media room, or a dedicated home theater. And a uh, big question that we get asked all the time is how much power do I need? All right, this is Tyson Rabbity. I'm filming from the Quality Audio Video Showroom in Centennial, Colorado. And let's dive right in. All right, so I'm on this forum, and the guy's asking um, if he needs more power for his system. Um, so I'm going to try to approach this, and um, some of it will be kind of hypothetical because I don't know his exact situation. Um, and I'll just kind of lead you through some of my thoughts um, on this and, and approach it from a few different perspectives. So he's actually got a pretty solid receiver. Uh, down here in the equipment list, it's a Denon AVR2311. Um, so currently it is about a decade old, but um, I popped over to Sound and Vision and just for a, a basis of what, what we're discussing and what uh, this guy has in particular, is this amplifier, this surround sound receiver is rated for 105 watts into 8 ohms, so an 8 ohm speaker load, with all tra channels driven. That's really important because um, a lot of manufacturers might rate their receiver or amplifier and it won't say all channels driven, so they may only be dri driving you know, two of the seven or nine channels. And so they're bumping up the, the marketing specs and what they can say the, the receiver can do per channel. Um, but nevertheless, just for a basis of reference, um, this receiver does have a good spec on it. Um, I will preface that with saying, you know, amplifiers are not all created equal. Power is not created equal. Um, there are amplifiers with significantly less power than this that will uh, by far and away outperform it. Um, so we just have to kind of preface that and that can be a whole nother video and discussion that we can get into. But I really like this, uh, this comment that he makes. He says, I just saw the new Terminator movie with some friends. I had one of the highest volumes I had had in a long time. And he's referring to the volume that he had on his system. Um, he's saying he, he had the volume turned up to minus eight dB on the Denon. After a while, he had turned it to minus 12. So he's just giving us a reference point of where he had the volume level set on his receiver. Um, in all honesty, it doesn't give us uh, enough reference because we don't know the size, the shape of the room. We weren't there, right? We didn't experience it with him. But what he's basically saying is, is that as he turned it up, because he's really excited, he loves the movie, uh, he was looking for that just ferociousness and impact from his system. And he wanted to show it to his friends. He's really excited about it. And he said the sound was good for his friends. They were impressed, but that something was missing. And he says he's not sure if the Denon, in, in this case the surround sound receiver, the piece that's amplifying the speakers, um, or the speakers themselves are the issue. Um, and I'll, I'll point out, too, that it could just be the room is an issue as well. There might just be some simple things that you could do with sound treatment in the room to address some of this. But in this case, if I had a guess, it sounds like the system was being overdriven and that the amplifier itself was clipping. So when a sound wave is coming in and it's just kind of doing a nice S pattern um, and the receiver is no longer able to keep up um, with, with that load, uh, it'll come up and instead of having a nice curve at the top, um, imagine that sound wave just getting completely cut off and going back down. And so the, the, the system was just being overworked more than likely. And so to answer the question, yeah, he could probably benefit from not necessarily more power, maybe just better power, a better amplifier. And possibly too, it could just be an amplifier that's capable of uh, you know, more power and having more headroom available there. You know, so just to show an example here, right? So he could look at um, any number of options. One possibility too is, is maybe just separating out the preamp and amp stage. So having two components do the same work that the receiver's doing. So as an example here, if I pull up, uh, company Parasound, they are uh, well known for solid engineering, um, a lot of performance for the for the money. Um, and you can see here, this entire chassis, right, is a uh, five channel amplifier, three channel amplifier that you can add until you get to the number of channels you need for your system. So this uh, component's only job is to provide good, clean power. And just for the heck of it, we'll go ahead and, and compare specs even though um, you know, a watt in this product um, versus a, a power increment in another product are not necessarily equal. 
This one is rated at 250 watts um, by five at an eight ohm load, all channels driven. And in this case, they also specified that they did it across the entire fre frequency spectrum from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, which I think is also important to point out in the test. Um, at the same point, they say if you can put a four ohm load, meaning your speakers are four ohm, uh, or the way you wire it ends up at four ohm load on the amplifier, then you're gonna get 400 watts continuous out of all five channels. So this is a significant amount of power increase over what he has. Uh, it's also coming from a dedicated piece with a better power supply and better internal components. So you can see here just by having a component that is engineered specifically for this job, that it may very well uh, give this guy what he's after, uh, which is the ability to, to increase the sound pressure in the room and not have the system start to give out on him. Um, you might pair this with, um, there's a lot of different uh, preamps and processors, but um, you'll want to pair it with uh, a component that is just handling the preamp stage. So in this case, I just pulled up this company, um, Acurus. Uh, they're part of Indie, Indie Audio Labs. Um, and so this guy's primary job is to handle all the processing. So all the video and audio sources come into it. And then you literally just feed those out um, into the amplifier. And so these two components together would handle um, the, the processing application for the space. Now, earlier I mentioned uh, the room. So um, some more simple things that I would probably try first is, is to maybe move the subwoofer if you can and just try different placement options with the subwoofer. Um, you might just you know notice uh, some really hard surfaces in the room possibly and, and look into some sound treatments. So the sound treatments might be the thing that you know fixes the room and allows the system to perceivably perform at a higher level. And another thing that'd be really interested to know is if there were particular areas in the frequency spectrum that were struggling more than others. So um, was it the low frequency spectrum, like the, the part that the subwoofer is handling that may have been struggling, or was it the mids and highs that are, in this case, coming from the B&W speakers? Um, you know, you might look at uh, crossover settings and adjusting uh, some of the calibration features of the receiver. These are all things that might just lead to um, the type of impact that you're looking for in the room. And sometimes, once we find that really sweet um, spot with the volume level and everything's been set on all that, you know, we will personally oftentimes then set a volume limit on the receiver. So if we notice that the system performs flawlessly and beautifully up to minus five dB as an example, or zero or whatever the volume level is, we'll put that volume limit in there and that way in most cases, you know, you can just go ahead and crank it up and you're not gonna enter that, that distortion realm and then in the back of your mind, you just know that eventually when you want to cross that bridge, you can look at upgrading the components, um, whether it's the speakers, the receiver, whatever is identified to need to change in order to give you what you're looking for. And then at that time, you can go ahead and entertain, you know, the possible swap or upgrade of components. All right. So today I attempted to answer the question, do you need more power? Um, I use this guy's system as a specific example. And at the same point, too, I was trying to shed light on... Um, some other things that you could do that may not be directly tied to increasing the power of the system that might also give you what you're after in terms of the overall performance of the room and, and the system as a whole. So I hope this was helpful. You know, let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you have some additional questions. I definitely encourage you to start the conversation. Leave us a comment below with uh, feedback or questions that you have. And be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. And until next time, this is Tyson Rabbity with Quality Audio Video in Centennial, Colorado. GoQAV.com. We'll see you later.